in this lecture, in this lecture, we will introduce a very famous work called musical general classification. Uh, this is one of the most fundamental and the most typical uh, work uh, you, uh, published to uh, do music information retrieval or music analysis. And this paper was published in year 2002 in IEEE translations on speech and audio processing. Um, the author is these two, these two guys. And uh, this professor uh, was the professors uh, in, Princeton, in Princeton, Princeton, I, I think. And uh, he is uh, simultaneously in the computer science department and the music department. So uh, in contrast to all previous work, they propose more music specific uh, audio features to do a musical general classification. The word general is actually French and uh, it is equal to class. So we will do music, uh, music class or music type uh, classification. And why they can do so? Because uh, there is a, a very important assumption is that the members of a particular GRO share certain characteristics. So for music general, <coughs> there may be may, like uh, country music, uh, there may be jazz music, uh, rock and roll music. And uh, the basic assumption for such work is that they think all rock, uh, rock music share certain character characteristics in common, such that we can find the uh, basic st statistic or the, the common characteristic of the rock music type. And why do we need automatic music general classification? Because with that, we can do music information retrieval. Uh, we can develop and evaluate uh, features that can be used in similarity retrieval, classification, segmentation, and audio subnailing. Therefore, this is one of the most important and fundamental uh, music content analysis work. There have already some related works, just uh, like uh, we have introduced before in previous lecture. Uh, audio classification has a long history originating from speech recognition. So in early years, uh, some works classify audio signal into music, speech, and an environmental sound. There are also some work on classifying musical instrument sound and the sound effect. Okay, and uh, but the feature they use are not adequate for automa automatic music general classification because right now we know that most audio features are origin uh, from audio signal processing or speech recognition like uh, zero crossing rate, like a uh, spatial flux, okay, and so on. But in this paper, they more uh, emphasize there should be some uh, music specific audio features. And uh, this is why uh, this paper is so famous, because they propose new types, new types of audio feature specific to music information analysis. In this paper, they extract uh, three types of features. The first one is the timbral texture feature. Uh, and uh, these types of features are basically conventional ones like spatial centroid, spatial roll-off, spatial flux, zero crossing rate, MFCC, and energy. All these features have been introduced before. And they also propose some music-specific features like rhythmic content feature and the pitch content features. And uh, uh, these two are uniqueness of uh, this paper. So we also uh, very briefly uh, review the timbral texture feature. Okay, the spatial centroid is the center of gravity of the negative spectrum of short time Fourier transform. So here, the MTN is the magnitude of the Fourier transform at frame T and the frequency B. And, okay. and uh, we can see here, this is just like uh, in the probability, this is actually the expected value 
uh, of the random variable n. Okay, of the random variable uh, mag uh, num numbers of magnitude, or we can see that this is just the the mean or the average, the weight average of the uh, uh, the Fourier transform. Okay, and uh, this is a normalization vector. Uh, and this major uh, is a spatial. Sh it's a major for uh, describing the spatial tra shape, and the highest entry value corresponding to brighter texture with high frequency. Therefore, we also uh, mention. We also describe a spatial centroid as brightness. Okay, we have mentioned this before. The second one is spatial centroid. Okay, so remember that uh, we accumulate, we accumulate the energy distribution until ninety-five percent. In this case, in this paper, they said of eighty-five percent until eighty-five uh, percent of energy distribute energy has been accumulated. Okay, and this is a major for skewness of the spatial shape. It's used to disti distinguish voice from um, voice speech and music because we already uh, talked about that. Uh, for voice speech, more energy concentrate on the uh, uh, lower frequency part, and for on voice speech, more feature, uh, more energy concentrate on the high frequency part. Okay. So we can use uh, the spatial uh, roll-off to discriminate uh, voice from um, voice speech and uh, uh, music. So uh, music basically uh, is more something uh, more similar to uh, voice speech. Also, spatial flux. Okay, it's a square difference between the normalized magnitude of successive uh, spatial uh, distribution. Here, n t n and n t minus one n uh, are the normalized magnitude of the Fourier transform at frame t and t minus one. So this is very simple feature. We just take the difference between the consecutive two frames and then take square and sum together. This is the 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 spatial flux, and uh, um, it's a measure of the amount of local spatial change for speech signal the uh, the the local change will be large for music the local change will be smaller also one of the most simple simplest one a zero crossing rate it's a measure of the noise of the signal so we just take the uh, the sign of xn and the sign of xn minus 1 and to check whether they have the same sign. If the sign change, that means uh, the signal change from the negative value to positive value, or from the positive value to the negative value, uh, the signal across the, z the zero value. Okay, and uh, uh, this feature is used to uh, discriminate on voice speech and the voice speech. On voice speech has a long volume, but has a low value, uh, but a high zero crossing rate. We also have talked about that before. The next feature is uh, MFCC, uh, male frequency spectral coefficient. We have al already mentioned that this is one of the most important uh, audio features used in speech recognition. It is also very uh, promising and very useful in uh, music information retrieval. In this paper, let extract the first five coefficient provide the best general classification uh, performance. So let's review uh, the uh, MFCC. So given uh, uh, an audio signal, we then do some pre-emphasize or win windowing or some filtering such that we have already got the window frame uh, after some waiting. And then we transform the audio frame by a f uh, fast Fourier transform. And then we can get the uh, frequency distribution, uh, the energy di distribution in the frequency domain. Now, uh, the main idea of MFCC is that we divided the frequency domain 
into different frequency range, different frequency band, uh, according to the characteristic of our human ears. So here uh, we divided the frequency domain into many uh, frequency bands and take the uh, the energy distribution in each frequency band. Okay, so the corresponding uh, corresponding uh, formula for this uh, this part is this is the uh, discrete Fourier transform, and then assume we have already take uh, one of the frequency band. The next step is take log arithmetic. So we take log arithmetic after some waiting, and we can. Uh, we can get this value SM and then we uh, perform a uh, discrete cosine transform to decorrelate the filter band up, up output so given SM we take the cosine discrete cosine transform to obtain the value CN okay the value CN so finally we can do some uh, we can get a lot of CN and we can uh, just take uh, the first few coefficients to describe the, uh, the, the the information of the given audio sound and uh, the most novel part of the MFCC uh, feature is that you can see here from the original time domain signal we first uh, use Fourier uh, transform to transform values, transform the information in the frequency domain, and then after uh, frequency uh, frequency band di division and uh, uh, log, and then we take uh, a, 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 a frequency transform again. So the uh, physical meaning of MFCC is actually the frequency value of frequency value. Okay, remember that this oh this is also a frequency transformation. But what we have transformed, we transform the frequency component of the original sound. So basically the MFCC is the frequency component of frequency component of the original sound. And in early year, because uh, the researchers do not know how to uh, how to name such uh, component so they just because if we transform the time domain signal into frequency domain then we can get spectrum that's P E C T R U M and then if we take again the frequency transform on spectrum then they they don't know how to name that so they just take their name as C E P S T R U M Septrum. Okay, they just reverse the uh, up alphabetical order S P E C to C E P S. So this is called Septrum. Okay, so this is called Septrum, and this is why uh, this feature is called male frequency. The male. The, the name of male means uh, the way we divided the frequency transform, uh, frequency domain. Uh, septral is coming from the septron, okay, septral and the septron, okay. Male frequency, septral coefficient, MFCC. And usually, uh, most uh, information concentrate on the first few coefficient. So, uh, in uh, many applications, in audio analysis, in uh, speech recognition, or in music analysis, uh, maybe the first 10 or the first 15 or the first 5 uh, MFCC coefficient are used to do analysis. Here are two examples showing uh, audio feature. Uh, uh, okay, so the X axis is the time. The y axis is the value of the frequency centroid, and the blue curve is uh, extract from the speech signal. The magnetar curve uh, are extract from the music. Okay, and we can see here uh, for the frequency centroid, uh, the speech signal has higher averagely, averagely high, has higher frequency centroid than music. 
and this is uh, the clip level zero uh, crossing rate okay and again we can see the speech signal has higher uh, Z ZCR than that uh, in uh, extract from the uh, music uh, to do music analysis and uh, actually for extracting uh, the timbre texture features we we have already mentioned that we need to do short time Fourier transform because uh, a long duration of audio signal has no stationary property and for applying the Fourier transform we need to assume the input signal is stationary okay so we need to divide it the original sound into many many small uh, audio segments and this is the so-called analysis window so for short time audio analysis small audio segments are processed uh, and uh, such small audio segments are called analysis window but to capture the long-term nature of the sound texture because right now we want to uh, classify uh, a given sound into one of the music general and it is impossible for us to classify uh, for example a 30 millisecond sound into one of the music type so we need to observe the evolution of audio features in a longer uh, time period okay so we want to calculate the means and the variance of feature over a numbers of analysis window and uh, such longer segment is called texture window for each texture window multi-dimensional Gaussian distribution of features can be estimated to more appropriately describe the distribution of different audio features and this is an illustration showing the analysis window and the texture window so given the audio sound given an audio and then we may uh, take like uh, 23 milliseconds okay and overlap uh, this analysis analysis window uh, actually the 23 millisecond corresponds to uh, 512 samples at the 22 K sampling rate okay and if we set the texture window the length of the texture window as one second and this texture window will consist of uh, 43 analysis window therefore to extract uh, the, uh, the clip level feature from this texture window we have to find the means and the various of the uh, audio feature extract from these 43 analysis windows so for uh, extracting the uh, clip level or for extracting the features from the texture window uh, this is uh, one of the uh, clip level feature low energy feature and uh, it's based on the texture window the meaning is the percentage of analysis window that have less energy than the average energy across the texture window okay uh, and the vocal music with silence have large lower energy value okay so vocal music okay because uh, we may not continuously uh, issue the sound issue sound so we must have some silence between different sentences okay so vocal music or speech will have uh, uh, a larger lower energy value the, the following features are the unique part of this paper uh, they propose a rhythmic content feature which is uh, quite different from the tim timbro texture feature uh, the characteristic of the uh, rhythmic is that uh, the regularity of the rhythmic uh, what is the rhythmic the relationship between the main bit to the sub bit and the relative strength to the sub bit to the main bit are very important for us to discriminate uh, different music general so in this work they propose uh, the rhythmic rhythm, rhythmic content feature and the step to extract uh, rhythmic is we first have to detect music bit okay so what is a music bit that 
theoretically, bit is the uh, the time instance, the time moment where we can perceive a significant uh, sound change, like bang, uh, bang, okay, bang, 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 bang. So this is uh, the the sequence of bit, and we may feel a uh, different rhythmic if the bit, uh, the period of the bit change, like. This is one kind of a bit sequence, and there may be another 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 types of bit sequence like, okay. So we can easily feel uh, different rhythm, okay. So first we have to detect a uh, music beat, and how can we do that? Uh, first we just do filter band decomposition. So this is like uh, we divided the frequency domain into uh, different frequency bands, and then from each frequency band we will extract uh, the audio envelope. Uh, the detail will be described uh, later, and then we will do porosity detection algorithm. Uh, used to detect the lag, at which the signal's envelope is more most uh, similar to its, itself. Uh, by describing this, you may think about that the whole process is quite similar to what we have said uh, before. Uh, yes, it's quite similar to uh, pitch detection, but uh, with larger period. And uh, to detect bits, we approximately use uh, the period. Uh, the periodicity is used as uh, 0 0.5 second to 1.5 second uh, for bit. But if we want to detect pitch, we may uh, set the uh, the value of periodicity as 2 millisecond to 50 millisecond for pitch. Therefore, first we have to transform the audio signal into the frequency domain. And here they use the discrete wave lay transform, DWT, because they try to overcome the resolution problem. Okay, because people perceive differently in different frequency bands. And as we said before, wave lay transform is uh, useful in decomposed uh, uh, original signal into several uh, frequency bands. With uh, uh, with uh, multiple resolutions, and uh, before this work, uh, what we have to do is to use the Fourier transform to transform the original signals into frequency domain. But in this work, they adopt the more uh, the more advanced uh, wavelength transform to do this. The discrete wavelength transform can be viewed as a computational efficient way to calculate an octave composition of the signal in frequency and we will describe uh, octave later and you can think about this is a uh, uh, basically DWT is used to uh, divide it, the frequency domain into appropriate uh, frequency bands and then they use the uh, double triple four filter uh, as the uh, wave lay kernel. Uh, if you are interested in what is double uh, four filter, uh, you can refer to uh, the paper about the wave lay transform. Uh, so basically, this is just uh, one kinds of uh, one kinds of uh, uh, wave lay kernel. You can do uh, uh, frequency transformation. Okay, and then we want to find the rhythmic structure. That is, we have to detect the most silent periodicity of the signal. So now we have transformed the original signal into the frequency domain with some uh, frequency band di uh, division. The next step is from each frequency band, we want to find a uh, bit. We want to find bit. And uh, the official definition of bit is the sequence of equally space phenomenal impulse which define a tempo for the music and uh, for different frequency band we will do the following uh, envelope extraction uh, process the first we will do full wave rectification and then do low pass filtering and then down sampling and then do mean removal uh, by aggregate the envelope in different frequency band 
we will do auto correlation and then pick the uh, peaks okay and then we can construct the bit histogram one is RTF uh, mathematically each RTF corresponding to different uh, vibration mode they correspond to different frequency and the two RTF in terms of in terms of frequency the difference between the fre uh, frequency of two RTF uh, is apart from two times for example the first LAR okay the frequency is 27.5 Hertz and uh, the second the second um, octave large the frequency is uh, 27.5 times by 2 and 55 Hertz so we can see that um, the the, uh, the large was higher octave uh, has two times of the frequency uh, on the frequency of the uh, LAR at the, the first octave and each octave can be subdivided into 12 equally spaced uh, semitone okay and this corresponding to uh, this okay and this uh, equally div division is the so-called 12 tone scale and uh, uh, each semitone uh, the corresponding uh, uh, the corresponding frequency of each semitone can be accurately uh, calculated uh, based on mathematical equation. Like here, there are 12 semitones in one octave, so a tone of frequency F1 is said to be a semitone above a tone with frequency F2 if and only if F1 is equal to F2 multiplied by 2 to the power of 1 divided by 12 okay that is around 1.05946 times of F2 okay and uh, if that we can say that the tone with F1 is one semitone above uh, as that with F2 what is envelope okay this is a way to roughly uh, describe the the shape of the, the the sound wave okay and we can describe the uh, energy evolution uh, with such sound wave and this contour is called envelope okay and uh, an envelope can be described by four parameters uh, for uh, region you can you can say that an envelope can be described into uh, four uh, range uh, including attack decay de decay sustain and then release just like when we uh, press a piano a keyboard when we press it uh, suddenly there is a sound attack there is a sound attack and this sound issue very quickly and then when we press keep pressing this keyboard this key and then the the the, the energy may decay so first attack then decay and then if we keep pressing then the sound may keep sustained and then when we uh, release uh, release the the, the, the the key the key then the sound will decay uh, will release okay so this is a four range uh, dis description of an envelope attack decay sustain and then release and in this work from each frequency band we want to describe the uh, frequency energy uh, by the envelope okay so they do the following process first they do four wave rectification that is we just take uh, the absolute value of each sample value uh, and then name it as yn and then we do the uh, low pass filtering okay actually this is yn okay this is yn okay do low pass filtering uh, low pass filtering is uh, implemented by smoothing the previous sample data and uh, the current sample data okay so this is a very simple uh, smoothing process and then we do subsampling okay in order to reduce the computation time so for every 16 samples we just sample one point out in the following process 
and then the final step is mean removal okay we just uh, subtract each sample point by the expectation value of the whole uh, sample points okay so this is called mean removal and and after mean removal we make the signal center to zero for the autocorrelation stage so right now we have already uh, extract the envelope of each frequency band and then we aggregate uh, the energy distribution from all uh, frequency band and based on such integrated envelope we calculate the autocorrelation uh, based on such integrated uh, 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 energy distribution okay uh, so this formulation is quite uh, we have already uh, familiar with this formulation this is to calculate the autocorrelation so we multiply the n's uh, sample point by the n minus k sample point okay and this is when the, the sample points are apart from each other with k samples okay and we can try different k value the peaks of the autocorrelation function corresponding to the time lags where the signal is most similar to itself and the time lag corresponding to uh, the big periodicities so here are uh, an example uh, about how we uh, extract the envelope so this is the original sound effect uh, original sound wave so first we do full wave rectification so, therefore we make all um, a simple value uh, positive and then uh, we do low pass filtering okay we do some smooth and then we uh, do subsampling and do mean removal and uh, based on such signal we calculate autocorrelation okay and uh, this is the autocorrelation figure the x-axis means different k and the y-axis means the autocorrelation value okay based on the autocorrelation value we can construct a bit histogram the first three first three peaks of the enhanced autocorrelation function are select and act to the bit histogram and the bin of bit histogram corresponding to uh, bits per minute BPM uh, from 40 to 100 BPM and because uh, from the autocorrelation we can uh, we can know uh, the porosity of each peak of the peak and then from the porosity we can do some calculation to transform the periodic as bit per minute okay so this is why we can construct the bit uh, histogram and for each peak the peak amplitude is add to the histogram uh, that means the peaks having high uh, amplitude are weighted more strongly so we are not just at one one by one we just uh, we we add the peak amplitude to the bit histogram okay so when the uh, signal is uh, with high amplitude then it, it will it will be weighted more these are four examples showing different types of music uh, having different bit histogram for classical music we can see here the x-axis means the bit per minute and the y-axis means the uh, uh, bit strikes for classic music classical music we can see that uh, we have uh, diverse uh, BPM we have diverse uh, big histogram and we, we, we cannot uh, very uh, clearly say that which BPM uh, is the stronger okay but for rock music we can clearly see that the BPM corresponding to uh, 80 and uh, 160 uh, the, 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 the bit stretch is especially uh, high especially large for BPM at these two uh, uh, as these two BPM okay and for J's uh, we can also see uh, the distribution is quite different from the rock okay and uh, uh, and the classical
Okay. And in, in classical, because it consists of uh, multiple instruments of the orchestra, so there's no strong self similarity. But for some uh, music genre like uh, rock and uh, hip hop, uh, they use some special, uh, they, they, they have strong tempo. So they have a high uh, auto correlation or self similarity. So in hip hop, uh, we can see clear peak at here at here sometimes at here okay so uh, this example show that big histogram can describe the uh, difference between different types of uh, music and based on big histogram we can extract uh, uh, several features uh, a0 and a1 are the relative amplitude of the first and the second histogram peaks Ra is the ratio of the amplitude of the second peak divided by the first peak. Okay, the relative ratio. P1 and P2 are the period of the first and the second peaks in BPM. Sum is the overall sum of the histogram that indicate the bit strength. Okay, so based on a, a sequence of classes, we finally extract uh, the bit histogram features. We don't uh, directly use the autocorrelation value or uh, the energy value, okay? But based on the sequence of energy distribution, uh, the process on the autocorrelation, we finally get the bit histogram. And then we extract feature from bit histogram. And this is the one of the uniqueness of this work. The the third part of the uh, music feature is based on pitch. Pitch is also one of the most important factor uh, to describe the frequency characteristic of the uh, music. Uh, so in music theory, okay, uh, music, music note can be divided into seven basic note, basic note that are do re mi fa so la si okay and uh, in american style we can denote them as c d e f g a b and uh, uh do re mi fa so la si do okay the next uh do is apart from the previous do by one octave okay so this is what we say before and we want to extract pitch content feature. Okay, uh, the idea is very similar to the rhythmic content feature because uh, they all have to calculate the cell similarity. Okay, and the signal is composed into two frequency bands below and above 1000 Hertz. And then we extract envelope uh, for each frequency band. And then the envelope are summed and uh, in an enhanced autocorrelation function is compute. So all the process are uh, the same as what we have done uh, to extract rhythmic content feature. The prominent peaks corresponding to the main pitch uh, for that uh, short segment of sound. So we also calculate the autocorrelation. We also pick the prominent peaks uh, from the autocorrelation. So what's what's the difference between uh, peak content feature and the rhythmic content feature? The only difference is the unit we calculate the autocorrelation. For uh, detecting pitch, we use very very short time uh, segment to detect the auto, uh, to calculate the autocorrelation. Uh, to detect to extract the rhythmic content feature, we have a much longer uh, time period to uh, calculate the autocorrelation. So the proposed process of big detection resemble pitch detection with larger period. Okay, For big detection, a window of uh, 65536 samples at 22k Hz is used. But for pitch detection, a window of 512 samples is used. So we can see the window is much, much shorter than that using bit detection. And then we also calculate autocorrelation 
uh, also based on such uh, mass medical definition. And we, of course, we uh, try different values of K and uh, we can get uh, various autocorrelation values. And for each analysis window, the three permanent peaks are accumulated into the pitch histogram. So again, based on autocorrelation, we select the three dominant peaks and accumulate them into a pitch histogram. This is the, uh, the same process uh, we have done for uh, the bit histogram. And uh, the frequency corresponding to each histogram peak are converted into musical note. Because right now, for the pitch histogram, we already have uh, in the x-axis, uh, these are frequency. And the y-axis is the, uh, the, 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 uh, the amplitude, okay? And actually, we can transform frequency into musical note. And this is the uh, transformation equation. So given, given uh, a frequency f, we can divide it by 440 and take log and then times 12 and then plus 69. Then we can transform uh, this frequency into a music note. And each music note is denoted by a real number. Okay, here is an example. So, um, okay, so we can calculate the n. n is the histogram B. That is also the median node number. Okay, so when we uh, transform the given frequency, uh, we may transform the node number as uh, like uh, 75 or 82 and so on. Okay, and uh, uh, from the tone 69 to 70, that, that would be a semitone. Uh, from 69 to 70, the difference would be a semitone. In addition to pitch histogram, in this paper they also propose the folded uh, pitch histogram. In previous one, uh, the unfolded version of the pitch histogram, the x-axis corresponding to different musical notes like do, re, mi, fa, so, la, si, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, si, and uh, the y-axis means the amplitude of each musical note. But as we say before, uh, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, si, do, Do and the do, they all correspond to the music note C, but apart from each other by one octave. But they basically correspond to correspond to do. Okay, so uh, in the fold case of the uh, pitch histogram, they try to integrate all music note corresponding to do and all musical note corresponding to re and so on. Therefore, the folded case of the pitch histogram is simply by quantize all musical node n. Uh, we take uh, the n mode 12 corresponding to C. And then uh, by doing so, we can accumulate all the uh, amplitude uh, of uh, the energy corresponding to do, do, do. Okay, we accumulate them together, and this is the so-called folded pitch histogram. And the folded, the folded version contains information regarding the pitch class, only corresponding to pitch class or harmonic content. And then the unfolded version contains information about the pitch range of the pieces. Therefore, they have different uh, characteristics and a different target. They also try to modify the folded pitch histogram, uh, and uh, this process is based on uh, musical theory. The folded uh, pitch histogram is mapped to a circle of fifth histogram, okay, so that the adjacent histogram beings are spaced a fifth apart rather than a semitone. Okay, uh, we do the following process: t uh, seven times c mode twelve. Okay. Uh, and uh, that is say we modify uh, the histogram beam 
okay and uh, what is circle of fifth histogram this is related to uh, the harmonic relationship between a musical note and uh, the distance between adjacent beats after such mapping are better suited for expressing tonal music relation and jazz or classical music tend to have a higher degree of pitch change than rock or pop music so based on pitch histogram uh, the 40 pitch histogram or unfolded pitch histogram we may be able to discriminate jazz and the classical uh, from rock and pop based on pitch histogram we now extract the following feature fa0 that is the amplitude of the mesma peak of the foldy histogram up0 and fp0 is the period of the mesma peak of the unfolded and the foldy histogram ipo1 is the pitch interval between the two most prominent of the foldy histogram sum is the uh, overall sum of the histogram so these features are quite simple, but we take a lot of our process to obtain the folding histogram and the unfolding histogram. Now in the evaluation, uh, they compare different classification methods, including a simple Gaussian classifier, Gaussian mixture model, and the K-nearest neighbor classifiers. And they evaluate the performance based on uh, a data set this data set consists of 20 musical gyros and the three speech gyro and uh, uh, for each gyro we have 100 uh, excerpts uh, with uh, 30 seconds and uh, these uh, music pieces are uh, taken from the radio CD mp3 and the file were stored as 22k Hertz uh, this is sampling rate uh, and each sample point is represented by uh, 16 bits and the mono audio files uh, we can see here the music general include classical country disco hip-hop jazz rock blue reggae pop and the mental and for classical they further uh, divided into core orchestra piano string uh, piano and a string quartet for jazz they also subdivided into big band cool fusion piano karate and swing so they there are a large numbers of music musical gyro and for speech sig signal they have male female and sports to do the experiment they use a single vector to represent the whole uh, audio file uh, this vector consists of uh, timbro uh, texture feature including 9 FFT base feature and the 10 MFCC feature so this is a uh, 19 dimensional and uh, also rhythmic content feature 6 dimensional and the pitch content feature 5 dimensional okay and then they do uh, tenfold cross validation that means 90 percent of uh, data are used for training and the 10 10 percent of data are used for testing here is a result okay uh, from the t uh, table one we compare uh, uh, the uh, uh, we compare several classification methods including uh, simple Gaussian method uh, Gaussian uh, Gaussian mixture model simple Gaussian and the uh, RTGS is the for real-time classification per frame using only tim timbro texture feature okay so RTGS is using just a timbro feature GS is simple Gaussian GM Gaussian mixture model and the KN and K nearest neighbor and to classify the music gyros into one of the 10 music uh, big uh, music gyros uh, randomly we get 10% accuracy if we use uh, only timbro uh, feature we get 44% accuracy uh, with simple Gaussian we get 59% uh, and with Gaussian mixture model we can get 61% uh, uh, accuracy if we take a Gaussian mixture model uh, with three Gaussian mixture or four Gaussian mixture uh, and the, the KNN classifier uh, 
have a slightly uh, slightly worse performance than uh, the Gaussian mixture model. And if we focus on subdivided the classical music into one of the four types, then uh, the accuracy of random may be 25%. Uh, using only temperature fe uh, texture feature is 61%. Uh, using Gaussian uh, simple Gaussian is 77%, and if we use GMM, we achieve the highest accuracy. Okay, and the KNN classifier uh, does not work very well. Its uh, performance is similar to the uh, simple Gaussian. And for classifying J's, uh, sim uh, similar thread can be obtained. Uh, we can uh, obtain the highest accuracy based on Gaussian mixture uh, model classifier. And the right one, the right figure, is just an illustration of these values. Uh, here they also propose, they also uh, present other classification results. Uh, if we just use the uh, timbre feature, uh, for music speech classification, okay, excluding MFCC, then we get uh, 86 accuracy. And uh, the MFCC based feature is used for the speech classification. If we just use MFCC feature to do uh, speech classification to classify as uh, female or male or sports speech, then we have 74% accuracy. Here is a confusion matrix showing the detailed performance of different uh, uh, music gyro. Uh, the meaning of this matrix is uh, how many percentage of classical uh, music and uh, is classified into classical music by the system. Okay, so this is this value. And uh, one percent of uh, Jay's music uh, okay, the matrix shows that the misclassification of the system is similar to what human would do. Okay, uh, and uh, this is means this means um, um, one percent jazz music is falsely classified as a classical music, and so on. And you can see that uh, many re is reggae, uh, twenty six reggae music are falsely classified as uh, hip-hop music okay so you can see some musical general are more confused than others okay uh, and by seeing the diagonal value we can see that uh, for classical music jazz music um, uh, reggae music and the pop music we have higher accuracy but for the rock music we have rock and uh, uh, blue we have uh, less acu less accuracy and uh, some uh, music zeros are uh, more confused with each other like uh, rock and uh, mental okay 33 uh, percent of mental music are falsely classified into rock because they may perceive very similarly. Okay. And so here we show that the rock music has worst accuracy because of its broad nature. Uh, here are two confusion matrix showing the detailed result of uh, the subcategories of J's and the classical. Uh, here we see we have six types of J's subcategories, and uh, the type for uh, the quartet uh, is quite difficult to detect. Okay, so the the, the quartet. Uh, J's subcategory uh, usually falsely uh, uh, classify as other types like fusion or uh, cool. Okay, and for classical, uh, core is very easy to be recognized, but for orchestra, uh, the orchestra 
the orchestra classical music uh, is usually falsely detected as a string quarter okay that means they are uh, overly confused in this work they also investigate uh, the setting of analysis window to extract the uh, to constitute the textual window okay the another the numbers of analysis window to extract the uh, clip level feature okay so they try different numbers of texture uh, windows uh, from 1 to 100 and then finally they find that uh, by considering uh, 40 uh, analysis window we can get uh, the best uh, performance so finally they use 40 analysis windows they also compare the effectiveness of different types of feature uh, here is the table showing performance of different types of feature if we just use the pitch histogram feature then uh, we get uh, 23 accuracy if we just see the bit histogram feature we get 28 if we just use the uh, short time Fourier feature we get 45 if we just take uh, MFCC we got 47 so uh, it's clearly that uh, MFCC is more MFCC and the uh, uh, short time Fourier feature are more effective than the proposed rhythmic content feature and the pitch content feature however if we integrate all of them we can get a much much higher uh, accuracy 59% uh, okay so uh, theoretically uh, we still see the short time free transfer or the, the timbre texture feature are more effective than uh, pitch content feature and rhythmic content feature okay and uh, this may be due to uh, actually it is quite difficult to accurately detect the pitch and the beat in the music signal therefore uh, this is still an ongoing research topic okay and uh, we can also see the same thread uh, from classical music and the jazz music by comparing uh, the numbers of uh, here so if we just use short time uh, Fourier texture uh, or MFCC we got uh, 56 or 58 but if we if we integrate uh, pitch histogram and uh, beat histogram we got a uh, 61% so the rhythmic and the pitch content feature seem to play a less important role in classical and the jazz data set uh, classification because the improvement uh, is quite small and uh, how can we improve that so it's possible to design general specific feature set so maybe specific for specific to JS or specific to uh, classical we can design more appropriate uh, music features by comparing the automatic uh, classification performance with human performance uh, 10 general use in uh, the previous study uh, blue country classical dance jazz latin pop uh, uh, rock uh, rock rap and rmb uh, 70 percent uh, correct after listen to three seconds so for human uh, after listening to three second music sound uh, the accuracy of uh, classification is 70 percent although direct comparison of this result is not possible it's clear it's clear that the automatic uh, performance is not far from uh, the human performance so uh, this slide is used to uh, explain the proposed system uh, has a very good uh, performance that is not far from uh, the human performance but you you may say that this comparison is not so fair because for human human just listen to three seconds but the machine uh, take the whole 30 second uh, music signal to uh, in, in in classification okay so uh, I believe there they already have some state-of-the-art music classification work 
uh, recently and if you are interested in, in this uh, field please refer to the most state of the art uh, research work so in conclusion uh, three feature types are proposed uh, timbral texture feature rhythmic content feature and the pitch content feature and overall 61 percent accuracy uh, can be achieved at the best and in the future the possible improvement include uh, information from melody and the sing, sing, uh, singer's voice or expand the general hierarchy both in wide and depth and more exploration of pitch content feature as i said before this is still an ongoing research and if you are interested in, in this work you can go to this url